Whiskey Jason here. Hi, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting really rare and exotic whiskeys. Um, today it's all about the Tomental Tundra. The Tomental Tour will be next and the Tomental here um, Tarn, um, Pete, will be later on. Now, these are bottles that are not even really available here in Germany. My friend, uh, friendly Mr. Z, Zasche, he was up at the border shop in um, Fehmarn. That is actually a ferry that goes back and forth between Germany and then over to Denmark. And so they actually have a border shop and it's like a duty-free place and they have all this... Um, uh, lower-priced alcohol products for the Scandinavian market. So people come in there with their trailers and their cars and they buy this and fill them and buy the different products and take them back up to Scandinavia where the prices, um, the alcohol taxes are much, much higher. But it's on German soil, so it's German um, things, but they pay, which is weird, um, in uh, Scandinavian currencies, crones and so on. I all right, who knows? But um, he was at the border shop and he was shopping there for us, the community in Germany, which I thought is kind of cool. And um, he took a picture of all the different things. And they basically, it's like a big, um, um, almost like a warehouse type of situation. It's a boat. Um, the boat doesn't move anymore. It's it's docked. Um, it's like a museum boat, and that's where they have the store in it. And there's a different ferry that goes back and forth all the time, but that's something else. And um, and so they just roll in everything on these pallets. And so there was a pallet full, basically, of Tom and Tal, um, things I never said. I said, I want it. And so and these are one liter bottles. So I guess they must have been originally here for the travel retail market. Travel retail didn't really happen the last two years, and so now they found it their way over to the border shop there in um, Feyman. Um, so that's that. All right, so what do we have here? We have a Tomental Tundra bourbon cask. So I'm just going to read on the back here. It says here, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to rant and rave a little bit in a second. Tomental is a smooth Irish born in the wild and stunning environment of the Carn Gorms National Park, situated in the highlands of Scotland. The high altitude, fresh mountain air, and spring water combine to create a sweet and complex whiskey that is truly wild in nature, yet gentle in spirit. All right, the high altitude and freezing conditions in winter mean that the Carn Moors is one of the few places um, out with few, with one of the few places out with the Arctic. Hmm. Uh, where areas of tundra exist. We're going to talk about that in a moment. All right. Um, cold and windy with sub-zero temperatures in the winter lead to a burst of life in the summer with wildflowers and animals flourishing in this unique landscape. Tom and Tal Tundra was born in this challenging environment. It is an elegant, balanced, and creamy single malt matured entirely in American oak bourbon barrels. So nowhere does it say first fill. Nowhere does it say natural color. But nowhere does it say here with um, coloring. So I thought it's the same thing in Denmark as well as now also in Germany that you have to put on the label. There's nothing on the label, but that color screams artificial coloring. All right. So now if you actually Google the Tom and Tal distillery, which I did, and then you Google um, actually, for example, then the um, Karn Gorms National Park, um, yeah. They're about 50 miles away, so I guess it's not that far away, but still a certain distance. And it's about an hour's drive away. Now, according to, I know Wikipedia isn't the best place in the world to learn about anything, but um, that's where I actually went and that's where I was looking at. According to Wikipedia, what we have here is actually, they do have some snow caps on the, on the north sides of the mountains. Um, there that actually keep, at least they have in the past, I don't know if it's this winter or not, or that, last winter, that actually have um, remained over those snow patches over the whole year. All right, so they actually have a whole um, uh, entry here. The Congarns hold some of the long, longest lying snow patches in Scotland. Um, so it says here on Ben um, Muktai, I'm not sure. Um, snow has been known to persist at a few locations from one winter to the next. Laying at the northeastern shoulder of Glan um, Karn Gorm is uh, Zista um, Mirdra. I don't know. 
and this hollow contains a patch which um, was known to persist through many years but has not done so since 2000, global warming. And also here we have um, Beriach Garb Core Moor is location of Scotland's most persistent snow beds. Snow has been absent from this um, corn just five times in the last century. So we had the years of, um, for example, 2003, 2006, and so on. But hey, all, all most of these um, quotes here are before 2010, before we had some more global warming up and some somewhat warmer winters there. But hey, okay, very, very good. And if you do actually look at the thing, it says it has here a tundra-like <laughs> I like that, a tundra-like um, area there, all right? So, um, one second here, um, tundra. So, um, the Khan Gorms form, form an Arctic alpine mountain environment with tundra-like characteristics and long-lasting snow patches. All right, so I guess maybe, but still, I don't know if Tom and Tal um, can call themselves and can claim to be one of the few places in the world outside of the Arctic Circle with tundra. I'm sure there are other places as well. All right, so what am I going to compare it to? I'm not going to complain about the name anymore, sorry. I'm going to pull out something here. Now, this did cost me 58 euros. 58 euros at one liter turns into 40 euros 60 at 0 0.7. Now, the Glen Morangi 10-year-old, no age statement, age statement, 40%, 40%. Um, this is 28 euros, so 50% cheaper than this. Not 100%, but 50% cheaper. So it's a big difference here in the um, in the price. So I think this is overpriced for what we're actually getting here. Let's move this over here so we can do that. So um, if you look at the color here, um, just at the bottles. Ooh. <laughs> that was a normal pour, not a Jason pour here. All right, so look at that. You can see a little bit of a difference here. Um, yeah, that's the way that is. All right, I'm sorry. That'd be a waste here to do this on my last video of the day and not have that correct. All right, very, very good. Now, I like this better. Sorry. Um, it's cheaper. It's better tasting. They only use a cask once or twice. Here we have no idea if it was first fill, second fill, fill, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth. Of course, they don't do that. But hey, it just says bourbon casks. And that color the whole time, it just re re reminds me here of artificial coloring. On the nose, I like. It's a very, very um, a lovely nose. Ooh, good word. Lovely. Um, there is some creamy vanilla. There is some nice wood spice. Um, there is a tiny little bit of caramel, and um, it has some honey in here. So that's actually very, very nice. On the box, um, thank you, Tom and Tyler. They always write down tasting notes here. Aromas of toasted oak and poached pears. Did not get the pears the first time. With overlaying marzipan, oh, white almonds. Um, so almonds and white chocolate. Oh, well done with your tasting notes. I like the nose a lot. Cheers. Oh, by the way, I don't have a whiskey base number. Hmm. It's so rare and exotic, no one has actually put it in the whiskey base yet. I swear I can taste the artificial coloring. <laughs> I don't know if you can, but I, it, it's, not, it, it's an artificial caramel color. Uh, ca artificial caramel aroma flavor here now the palate does not live up to the nose the nose is a c plus whiskey the palate is a c minus whiskey there is a bitterness to it it's like the skin of a walnut that bitterness um yeah it's i don't know if almonds have skins as well as yes, they actually do you can also poach them i guess or bleach them and so on. Um, but yeah, that's the that's a, like the almond skin there. All right, here in the uh, box it says here nutty. Oh, looky there, and creamy mm, with layers of vanilla, fudge, stone fruits, and cream anglaise. All right, now I have no idea before I started doing this what anglaise was, um, and I actually had to Google this. And um, so for those of you that are much more knowledgeable than I am, thank you very much. And there's a lot of you out there. 
Um, oops, I thought I had it still on my um, sheet, but I don't. So we have the Anglaise here. Um, one second, because I read about it here. Um, yeah, there we go. So, wow, got this one wrong. Yeah, it's called Crème Anglaise, uh, French for English cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, some people call it custard cream or pouring custard or just simply custard. And as a light sweetened, a pouring a custard used as a cream dessert or sauce. It's a mix of, of sugar, um, egg yolks, and hot milk, usually flavored with vanilla. All right. So um, in the American South, um, it's, a, it's sometimes instead of called drinking custard, it's called Eggnog. <laughs> okay, very, very good. So we now have some nice little alternatives here instead. So, all right, it tastes a little bit like eggnog. Hmm, you would have known. All right, so 40%, one liter bottle, uh, 58 euros, way too expensive. Now, this smells better. It takes a moment for that taste, uh, for the aromas to develop, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And this actually also tastes better, especially the finish. We have a nice bourbon oak toasty spice without getting bitter, <clears throat> without getting moldy, without getting musty, without getting anything wrong there. Very, very nice. Very well balanced. Thank you, Dr. Bill, for having a Glenmorangie 10 out there, which could be the benchmark for all whiskeys, basically, in that range here. Very, very nicely done. Um, what I did not do in my English video, which I'm going to do in my German, which I did not do in my German video, which I'd like to do in my English video, is to do this. Three drops of water. Let's see what happens. Will it get better? Will it get worse? Cheers. Not much better, to be honest. All right, the finish should be warming and long with hints of orchard fruits and sweet spices lingering on the tongue. Hmm. It actually got a tiny bit bigger, uh, bigger, better with the with the water. That 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 bitterness turned almost into more of an oaky spiceness there. Yeah, but I still the whole time get artificial coloring on the tongue. It's not really what I can recommend and say yummy yummy sorry i like tom and Tao. i like a lot of the products but this time it just didn't do it for me all right stick around for the next video which will all be about here our oloroso sherry cask and then after that we will have here our Peter from Tom and Tom. So let's see what that will be. Thank you very much. Whiskey Jason here please like subscribe tell others and I hope to see you very soon in the comments Question number one is um, bottle size. So now over here in Europe, we have a lot of people that say, I only buy 700 milliliters. I do not buy 750. I do not buy 500. I do not buy 350. I do not buy one liter bottles. Are you willing to buy smaller bottles? Question or larger bottles. Um, we do have the handles in America, 1.75 gallons. Um, would you buy whiskey in that size? Would you buy whiskey in the one liter size? Would you buy whiskey in the um, 500 milliliters are not allowed in America, but I think it's 375s that you're allowed to have. Isn't it crazy that we have different bottle sizes uh, that are allowed in the States and the European Union? Now, I do know that America has opened up the market now for not just the standard 750 milliliters, but also for the 700 milliliters like this. And I hope you'll be getting more and more um, opportunities to buy exclusive 700, 700 milliliter bottles that are no other that are not available anyplace else in the states because of that. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Canada has had that um, opportunity for many many years now, even though they are state controlled and they decide who gets what and when and why and at what price. All right. So the question of the bottle size: Would you be willing to be buy? Buy bottles that are bigger than 750, for example, one liter or 175, 105, I don't know what's possible, 15, or even smaller, 375 and all the way down to, I don't know, two, 200 milliliters. We'll see. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Bye-bye. Whiskey Jason here. Thank you.